Hello and welcome to Ginger Prime. My name is Brian and if you're checking out this video trying to decide if you should jump into the world of Final Fantasy XIV, I say with the most sincerity possible, yes, please do. But start first with the free trial. You can play the unlimited free trial up to level 60 and this will actually put you through the second expansion of Heaven's Word for free with no monthly subscription needed. If you just consider Heaven's Word as a standalone RPG, it is a master in its class and it shouldn't be missed. But that pitch aside, I'm making this guide to help welcome you into this game. We're going to talk about your starting classes and their jobs, advanced jobs, and the fastest way to level up in this game. And on top of that, I'm going to throw in some general advice from a 10-year veteran of this game. I'll do some deep dives into different jobs specifically in other videos, so if you're looking for more content, be sure to subscribe or check the links in the description if you're looking for a good playlist for Final Fantasy. And also, if you're looking for a good podcast to listen to while you level up, check out Ginger Gaming Radio. Link is in the description for even more Final Fantasy content. Okay, so let's go ahead and get you started with your character. And with all that being said, welcome to the world of Final Fantasy XIV. Before we jump into character creation and selecting your job, you do need to be aware of data centers. They're region-based, and within each region, you have a couple of different data centers, which house the different servers, aka worlds, that you're going to be creating your character on. This is only really important if you're planning on playing with friends. Otherwise, you can pick whatever region best suits you. Personally, we're here on North America, on Aether, on Sargatanus. If you're looking for a group of people to play with and you want to team up with us, we're always welcome to helping out new players. But that being said, if you do have friends, they are playing the game, check out what data center they're on. And so that way you can sync up with them in game very easily. You can actually play with anybody within your data center, but outside of the data center, you're going to be walled off. You're going to have to make another character. And this kind of brings me to the big point. If you do buy the game and you do subscribe to the game, there are two different levels. There's the lower tier subscription, which is going to give you eight characters, one per server, or you can have the higher tier subscription and you can make up to eight characters on each server, up to 40 characters maximum. There are some values. There are some benefits to actually having multiple characters. We'll talk about that more later on in this video, but specifically you can do all of the work on one character. You can, one character can play all of the jobs that we're about to talk about. So just kind of keep that in mind that you're not going to be restricted or limited that way. So let's go ahead and dive into character creation and we're going to start a new character. You're going to see a list of different races. Now, if you have Shadowbringers, if you purchase the game, you're going to have access to Hrothgar and Viera. However, with Heaven's Word, you get Ora and everything earlier. So new trial players, as well as everybody else, gets all of those. And Shadowbringers gets the two new races that have been added. Races are purely cosmetic, but you can see I'm probably a fan of Hrothgar, so I'm going to go and pick one. Your clan isn't as important. There are some lore implications. The look that is just really cosmetic, you can hit randomize appearance up here, and it's just going to jump through varying different ways that you can kind of style your character. And you can see there's a lot of options here. A lot of things to choose from when deciding what kind of character you can make. And you can also choose different poses. You can have them do different things as well as if you want to pick a job and small class if you want to get a real up close and personal relationship with your character themselves. I'm going to go and select this one. It's going to give me the option to say save appearance data. This is if you really like the look of your character, you can save it and it's recommended because you can change your look. And if you really want to easily recover that look, you can just say yes. You can give it a slot. You can give it a name. I'm going to say that because it doesn't matter and in this case. And now I can recall it from here. You're going to be presented with the Aorazine calendar and you can pick any number of value that you want. It's really not that important. And so is your guardian deity. It is not that important. So you can just kind of pick if one of these just stands out to you lore wise, go ahead and feel free to choose it. Then we're finally brought into the character uh, creation for the job itself. If I go ahead and slay job down here, we can see some different gear and you can get an idea of what the job does. So gladiators evolve into paladins at level 30 and that's going to be your tank role. This does use the Holy Trinity, even though we do kind of have what they call technically five roles, caster, range DPS, melee DPS, uh, healer, and then tank as well. So gladiators are going to be your tank like all tanks. Uh, they are best and this is going to be a great choice for you if 
you are somebody who wants to have a lot of damage mitigation, you're going to have that pure tank roll. Uh, and they actually have really good damage output and really good AoE as well. So they're a lot of fun to play. Personally, they're my favorite currently in this expansion. Pugilist is going to be your monk. This is going to be a melee damage deal uh, dealing machine, uh, obviously up close and personal with the varying fists and martial arts. The, pick this if that's kind of your style and that's your aesthetic that you want to go for. Now, one of the things I will say, because you can play multiple jobs on every character, it's important to note that if you really, really love a job, note that with updates, that can change. So it's very important to either have a couple of different jobs in the different roles to have the best possible experience with 14 or uh, have a couple different jobs in the same role itself that's going to drive you to you know honestly if they make a change and it, you don't end up agreeing with it you can end up having an easy backup different job to play all that being said it's important not to get distracted by changing jobs all the time especially in the early game of this game as well get through arr get through the first kind of story patch because that's going to unlock flying for you in these zones and that's going to be a game changer in terms of leveling up alternate jobs and more so just keep in mind we'll be doing kind of a deep dive alternate job leveling guide here on the channel here in a couple of days so keep on look for out for that i'm excited to bring that to you anyway we have marauder a marauder is going to be another tank this is also like if you think of that beastly bear style tank if that's kind of your aesthetic you're going for pick warrior warrior just got some big updates with patch 5.3 at the time of this recording and they are a lot of fun to play you can't go wrong with warrior or with paladin if those are your tanks and those are going to be the two options that you have available we'll talk about our advanced jobs which comes with expansions here in just a little bit so if you're asking about dark knight note that i will come to it quickly all right, now we have Lancer, which evolves into Dragoon. This is another melee DPS. A spear has a little bit better survivability, even though we do meme and joke that Dragoons make excellent floor tanks as the sixth role in the game. The reason is, is if you're playing Dragoon, you'll end up being so focused in on your rotation. They do have a very, or at least a varied complex rotation for their skills to really maximize out their DPS. And with that rotation, I often find myself getting tunnel vision and standing in things that I shouldn't be standing into and thus taking damage that I really shouldn't be taking uh, damage with. But overall, Dragoons make an excellent job to this game and they shouldn't be ignored for any reason in that case. Finally, on the Disciples of War from the early 1.0 world into now, uh, you have Archer, which becomes Bard. This is the only option for ranged melee DPS, meaning ranged physical. We'll get into the casters in a second. And this is an excellent option. In fact, I would actually recommend, if you don't mind having that utility and support, if you're looking for more mobility and you're looking to step into this game for the first time and you do want to take that DPS, but you don't want to be up close and personal, pick Archer, pick Bard. This is going to be a great way for you to experience the world in the game from the safety with a little bit of range itself. Otherwise, you can jump into the magical world of magic and pick Conjurer. Conjurer is going to become your white mage, aka a real pure build healer in the world of Final Fantasy XIV. Personally, it's my favorite healer so far in the game, and you have two others. We'll talk about those in a second. Then you have Thaumaturge, which becomes Black Mage. This is a caster. This is your, like, <laughs> blow things up with fire, ice, and lightning magic. Obviously very classic with the world of uh, Final Fantasy, the Black Mage. But Black Mages here are no slouch. In fact, honestly, right now Black Mage is my favorite caster in the game itself. A real personal pick. They do have some complexity that builds, especially once you get into the 60s and up ranges. But note that it's something that with enough practice you'll be able to master. And you'll be able to bring out a ton of damage. And you're going to see some big numbers here on the Black Mage. So do not ignore it if you like casters. And finally, you have Arcanist. And what it's showing here for Arcanist is Summoner. But Arcanist evolves into one of two jobs. They can evolve into Summoner, which is a caster DPS with a pet. So that's kind of how that's going to work overall. Or you can end up selecting it as a Scholar. Scholar is going to be your healer with that fairy pet that's going to also be able to put out healing. So overall, you can actually switch to this at level 30, but Arcanist isn't going to start out in that healer role. It's going to start out in that caster DPS role. So keep that in mind. That's the only weirdy oddity about the game. That's the only inconsistency when it comes to the jobs so far in the world of Final Fantasy XIV. 
And rounding out the list is our first advanced job that ties into ARR. This means, and this is the only one that does it this way, just like how Scholar and Summoner build off of Arcanist, you have the Ninja, which builds off of Rogue. However, Rogue is not a starting selection, and it kicks off in Limsa Lamenza. So once you hit level 10, you can head out to Limsa Lamenza, you can pick up the Rogue job, and from there, you can level it up and at level 30 become a Ninja. Highly recommend it. This is a melee DPS, a lot of fun to play, but you need to be very physically aware of your surroundings and not getting hit by avoidable damage. Unlike the Dragoon, ninjas are squishy, but they hit so hard. You're going to really like this if you like doing a lot of damage and if you like to have a lot of movement and versatility, especially later on in the game when you get your shadows and you're able to do a lot of different combos. Anyway, I highly recommend it. Check out Ninja. So now it's time to talk about advanced jobs, and these come in the form of different expansions. There is no base class for these. These are all 100% job and job focus going forward. So with Heaven's Word, you get Machinist, Astrologian, and Dark Knight. Machinist, in this case, is a ranged DPS to complement Bard. This is going to be right in that wheelhouse if you go that direction. So if you like Bard, you're probably going to really enjoy Machinist, and the changes they made to it over the last expansion have been incredible. It's one of my favorite ranged DPS to date. That being said, you have to finish ARR. You have to get all the way through that story to be able to unlock Machinist. This is totally included with the free trial. So if you do that, you can go jump into Machinist and it starts at level 30. The Astrologian and Dark Knight both have the same unlock conditions and Astrologian is going to feel the role of the healer. This is going to complement Scholar and White Mage. And with it, you get the Divining deck. This is a set of cards. Think on raid utility, you're going to be able to bring out and enhance people's DPS overall with your cards, as well as providing healing and standard damage. Overall, with Shadowbringers, with the changes of healers, they all kind of have a similar damage rotation. It's not that deep. There's going to be a dot, there's going to be a cast, there's going to be an AoE, and then they're going to have some kind of mechanic to them as a job themselves. So there really isn't too much to go into in terms of which healer should you play. Personally, I would recommend White Mage. Astrologian should be touched. And in all honesty, with every expansion, you should definitely, if you like a specific role, if you are just gonna be someone who's gonna be a healer, or just gonna be a tank, again, be sure to have another job in that category leveled up less a change comes along and you don't like it. That's going to save you a lot of frustration whenever the excitement of a new patch or a new expansion drops. So Heaven's Word concludes with Dark Knight. Same unlock conditions as all before. And this is a tank with a great sword. Honestly, one of the best. I really enjoy Dark Knight and I've mained it in one expansion. I'm currently not maining it because I personally would recommend if you're going to pick up a tank, start with Paladin and then check out Warrior and see which one you like the best for yourself. But Dark Knight feels so good. In fact, if you're a longtime Final Fantasy fan coming in from a tactic series, both the Paladin and Dark Knight, this expansion will give you something very enjoyable to kind of sink your teeth into as it goes. Honestly, I can't recommend Dark Knight enough. And at the same time, it is difficult because you have that unlock condition behind it. So for those of you who are wanting to kind of dive into a tank, if you're not really going to main all the tanks, maybe this will be something good to check out as soon as you complete as a reward for finishing ARR. This then brings me to Stormblood and in which you get two jobs. The unlock conditions for these jobs are very simple. In fact, you don't have to finish ARR to do so. But if you're a part of the free trial, you're not going to have access to the following jobs. You have Red Mage, which is going to be another caster. It's going to complement Black Mage and Summoner. In this case, Red Mage has a casting and a physical or physicality to it. They get a jump in, pull off some physical moves, and jump back out. And their cast has that dual cast mentality. So you're going to have a cast that has a cast time, and then you're going to get a buff that's going to allow you to insta-cast your next spell. Red Mages or Res Mages or utility mages like they've got so much versatility and their movement is definitely much better than that of the summoner or the black mage in my opinion you can move with all of the different casters you're just going to have to uh, the adjustment period between learning their movement and when to cast and when to move is going to take a little bit of time red mage i think would be an excellent starter caster if it was a part of the beginning of the game but it's not so maybe pick up black mage and check out red mage when you hit level 50 
and clear the Praetorium in the game. So if you've got Stormblood, you should definitely check out Red Mage. But competing for your time and attention is another melee DPS, and this is Samurai. Samurai, from my personal perspective, is a black mage with a sword. If you like movement, if you like being up close and personal, and you like bringing a ton of damage, Samurai should not be missed for any reason whatsoever. Honestly, I've enjoyed Samurai since they've introduced it, and I still enjoy it to this day. So be sure to get, keep it <laughs> on your radar. Same unlock conditions as before. Get to level 50, have Stormblood, and then you should be able to access this job. And it starts in Ulda, so just go nuts, have fun, enjoy this job, and let me know what you think in the comments below. So this brings me to our current expansion, Shadowbringers, in which you have Gunbreaker. This serves as the tank role. This is unlocked by reaching level 60, so not the stringent lock conditions that Heavensward has, but you will need to have the expansion to play this job. Gunbreaker is an amazing tank with a lot of different abilities and cooldowns. Honestly, by far, this is putting... It's right in the range of Paladin. I would say if you're starting out and you decide to go ahead and purchase the game and jump in, start with Paladin if you're thinking tank, and then go to Gunbreaker. You're going to enjoy the versatility, the movement, and its rotation is far better, especially at higher levels, in my personal opinion. So right now, Gunbreaker is personally competing for my time and attention over Paladin. I'll let you know who ultimately wins. We will be doing kind of a versus series on all the tanks, all the healers, all the DPS, so be sure to check out that when that drops here on the channel later this month. Last but not least, by any stretch of the imagination, is Dancer. Same unlock conditions of reaching level 60. Dancer is going to be in, in the same category as your Bard and as your Machinist, thus serving and bringing a lot of utility to your raid group, a lot of enhancement to your damage, a healing. It's got it all. Honestly, they've done an incredible job with Dancer, and it is a premier job that I am just happy that they finally added to this game. So it should not be missed. This is going to, again, have you that with the movement, with the range, and you're going to have lots of different dance steps to master. So hopefully you enjoy that. If you do, be sure to check out Dancer and don't ignore it when you have the time. Okay, so let's talk about the fastest way to level up in the game. It's MSQ. You're going to see these symbols with the wonderful little meteor symbol and the exclamation mark over their head. Everything in this game is MSQ gated. The MSQ is going to take you all the way through the story. If you get lost for any reason, you have this main scenario quest guide. This is going to tell you where you need to go in the game and just by clicking on it. It's also to be mentioned, trial by win. This is the class quest. You're going to have whatever class you pick, in this case Conjurer, doesn't matter, is going to start you off and every five levels you're going to get a class quest. Do not ignore these because this is going to also be how you unlock jobs and so many other things in the game. If you're just playing and you're like, where do I go, what do I do? This is going to be your guide and then below it is going to be your class guide and your job story <laughs> and uh, guide, etc. So this is going to give you two bits of information and tell you where you need to go so that way you can find everything real easy and simple. So just want to point that out. The reason why MSQ is the most important way to level, everybody's going to ask, got to do it. Even if you got all the way to level cap, even if you were level 80 and you have not done a single MSQ story, you're not going to unlock the raid. You're not going to unlock anything until you do the MSQ. So it's just important that you follow these with a passion and a fervency if you want to get to cap as fast as possible. To add to your experience on the daily rotation, you can go into your duty member and your duty finder, and here you're going to see varying roulettes. Your leveling roulette is going to be a huge source of XP and currencies for you. You'll also see this adventure in need, and it's going to tell you a specific role. Pay attention to that role because that's going to feed you a lot of things. Uh, you know, in this case, some stellar clusters, which will actually feed you Matera, which will help overall. Anyway, long story short, pay attention to your leveling roulette. And then this opens up the Guildhouse roulette at level 10. Your leveling roulette opens up at level 16. So as soon as you start into that, you know, group style content, be sure to take advantage of your daily bonus, both with the Guildhouse and the leveling. This is just going to feed you experience. And overall, while you're still following MSQ, you'll actually out-level it. And by the time you get closer to endgame, it's going to help make a lot of things easier for you. And then this also ties into alternate leveling. But I think that's going to, like I said, going to be a different guide because it has a little bit more focused once you finish the MSQ. So again, be on the lookout for that coming to the channel later this month. I did say at the beginning of this video, there's a reason why you might multi-character. And it comes down into the concept of currency. 
In the game, once you start hitting the end game concept, you're going to start feeding yourself varying currency. And the main currency in this case at the time of this recording is Allegory. That's going to give you your highest end purchasable gear, but you're going to be weakly capped on that. So let's say you want a healer, a tank, and a DPS to level up for this game to compete and do end boss end game rating. You're going to want to have one character for each because otherwise you'll be capped on your drops for the week and on the the type of gear you're looking for for the week so you're going to have to work your way through that the whole system the whole story so keep that in mind that if you're one of those players that want to really kind of just dive in you're going to want at least three characters or more depending on the roles that you want to level and max out every time i said that's important and that's going to vary by player to player for me it's not as important so eh, i just kind of deal with it but I did want to call that out. Now, the other side of the things is you might see myself playing with a controller and might say, hey, Brian, how are you playing with the controller? Does this game work on a controller? And honestly, it works incredibly well. While I've done controller guides, especially over at work to game and again, the, the, the playlist in the description will take you to all of our Final Fantasy content here and there. Uh, I'm not going to kind of just rehash everything. It's very easy to do. And honestly, if you're wanting to switch and check it out for yourself, going to the gamepad mode and mouse mode is easy to switch between the two. You've got two different movement styles when using the controller. Legacy type, which is camera based and standard type, which is going to have if I hit back, it's going to have me back up if I just go and hit play so you can actually see that. So this is going to be standard type. Pressing back is going to have me back up, running forward and strafing side to side. Or if I prefer... I can pick legacy type, which is how I typically play and go from there. And then the last kind of tip, especially just as a quick tip for controller players, check out the filters tab. You can see custom versus enemies. So when your enemy or when your weapon is drawn, when you're targeting, you're only gonna then target enemies by using the D-pad left and right. Otherwise, if your weapon is drawn, you're gonna only target possible enemies. Makes it a lot easier up and down, side to side, to be able to target who you need to target. I have it set to where I only target party members using up and down and only target enemies left and right, especially when my weapon is drawn. So you can play around with different filters. And again, we have an ultimate controller guide over at uh, work to game that I'll include in the description of this video and linked in the cards. So you can go find that easy because I dive into so much information when it comes to the controller. And honestly, it's an incredible way to play. So hopefully you check that out. That's going to wrap up this video. Hopefully you found it interesting. Hopefully you've enjoyed the content here. And if you had, I hope that you subscribe. And if you feel like this is the video that's earned your, my, you know, like your subscription, I was about to say my subscription for some reason, let me know in the comments below so I can officially welcome you over to the Soul Nation. But for Ginger Prime, my name's Brian. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day and I hope to see you in my next video. But until then, take care. This video is sponsored by me, Ginger Prime. Hopefully you'll check out my podcast channel, Ginger Gaming Radio, which we have lots of guests, lots of great conversations, and even more highlights. Links are in the description below. Let me know what you think. Thanks.